Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, really appreciate you stopping by on today's video. The Ajax. We've talked about the Ajax program for some time and when I initially started talking about it uh, back in, I can't even remember what year, uh, I was excited, I was really excited, but I was also uh, hesitant as to get really excited to the point of which I thought the program was going to be the next best thing, it was going to be fully implemented in the British Army and be the program of the future. And that has slowly but surely through time been adjusted with the reports and the testing and the, to be honest, huge amounts of publicity this vehicle has had for the British Armed Forces and the MOD. And I have to admit, uh, the Ajax as a platform is highly impressive with its caseless telescopic ammo. You know, it's got a lot of high-tech features that you see on other platforms that we recently did videos on, like the Lynx and the, you know, KF-21, etc., etc. So there's a lot of capabilities in this vehicle that are really, really exciting. And uh, I have to admit, there's a ton of people have been asking me to make this video today because there's unfortunately some troubled times for this platform and this program. Now, I want to be very clear as a disclaimer before going into this. I have uh, no affiliation to uh, the British Army anymore, and uh, of course I'm not a subject matter expert on this equipment, this vehicle, or this program, and I have no bias towards it, you know, I have no uh, investment into the program of any kind, and I don't want to discredit it either and say, you know, it's not performing or it's not doing what it's been asked, but there is unfortunately some information that's been leaked uh, from this program, and the manufacturer is going through some troubled waters with the program. Now, the Armored Fighting Vehicle Ajax is the new reconnaissance Armored Fighting Vehicle with other platforms being initiated or other models being initiated in the future uh, for the British Army. And it's, it is a very capable platform. From what I've done my research on, it's doing very well for itself overall in the technicality side of things. However, in the £3.5 billion or £4.8 billion uh, of the 600 military fighting vehicles that they've designed and are hopefully supposed to get procured, they've only received 26 from General Dynamics, which is very very slow. Now the program initially started in 2010 uh, with some of the technical problems that were happening with it and trials of the Ajax have been suspended unfortunately uh, since eight soldiers suffered injuries in uh, earlier this summer uh, due to vibrations when driving the vehicles. Now there's lots of speculation about how this happened. Uh, the technicalities are of course Really just speculation, they really are. The factual information is difficult to ascertain because the sources that I've been finding it from have contradicted themselves a little bit. We've got talks of radio headsets, we've got talks of hull problems, we've got talks of track problems and, and uh, running gear, all sorts of strange information going around. So, you know, I don't really want this to be a specific uh, informative video to tell you exactly what and why these things are happening. It's more videos to it's concerning. It's concerning because this is going to be the replacement reconnaissance vehicle for the British Army for the foreseeable future. Of course, we do have the Combat Vehicle Reconnaissance Tract or the CVRT platform that has really had its day. We've talked about it in the past, about how it served the British Army for a long time, done its job very, very well, uh, but it's time for it to retire. I can safely say as a mechanic repairing those vehicles, they're an absolute nightmare. So I think every armoured cavalryman or any kind of armoured regiment are very excited to see a new platform coming to the forefront but is it this one at this present moment it's hard to say and the biggest question that is coming across the table of everyone around the world right now is is this going to be a possible program cancellation now there have been a lot of back and forth about this um, there's some potential legal battles with this with the ministry of defense and the manufacturer that could emerge over the issue of compensation if this program is cancelled huge amounts of money here um, but i don't think we're quite at that stage yet you know programs come across issues they do but one of the things is more concerning with this one is that the technical problems of vibration and things like that have been noted for the design of this vehicle since 2010 and it's kind of just been accepted as an integral part of its design and that's scary now you're probably wondering why are vibrations a big issue matt i mean you're in a track fine vehicle running gear is going to be loud and vibrational and it's going to be you know give you a bit of a shake here and there because you're in a track fine vehicle that's what happens look when I served with the Warrior and other tra track fighting vehicles, you got used to the vibrations, but they were nowhere near to the point where it made you feel ill or sick uh, or gave you sort of a repetitive strain injury type feel. Uh, it was just kind of natural. I mean, yes, you knew you were in a track fighting vehicle, the running gear, suspension, the tracks and the track pads all kind of, you know, absorbed the majority of it. What seems to be happening at the moment with this vehicle is that it's so extreme that troops are actually getting sick from it. Uh, the technicalities of how they're getting sick is 
it's hard to say. But the two biggest problems are its noise and its vibration. And the halts of the tests to this vehicle really do speak to say, this is serious stuff. It's really serious stuff. Now, Ajax has been always recognized as this as being noisy on tests that were performed uh, the vehicle demonstrated that was within usable limits however but subsequent investigations have actually found that there's been hearing loss of crews trialing the platforms and concluded the issues are arising from the integration of the bowman headsets for crew radios which were picking up engine noise and actually amplifying it as the vehicle accelerated putting the sound directly potentially into the crew's ears now as i said the more research i do into this it's harder because there's some conflicting stories so conflicting information so i want to make this very clear that i'm not saying that this is the facts that are coming out here there's there is a lot of i guess speculation going on here but it does raise serious questions though about how the british army tests these vehicles you know and how it can be resolved if just simple things like headsets are replaced is it going to fix it but the vibrational issues are a lot more problematic testing really is challenging to do on a tracked vehicle for vibration um holes is a big part of this now a lot of the things that they've been noticing with the vibrations is that the quality control potentially of the fabrication of the hulls has been not of the highest standard. The company so far has produced around 270 hulls from an overall contract of around about 600 vehicles. Quality control is understood to be quite poor unfortunately through the first 100 hulls that were manufactured in Spain but this issue has not been entirely eliminated in subsequent batches. So some problems have been including being inconsistent lengths, the sides of the hull not being parallel, subsequent welding, fittings and furnishings not being attached correctly, uh, using the correct jigs resulting in spacing of holes being uneven, etc, etc, etc. What this means is that it's not a significant shortcoming on all of the holes, it means that some. It's not saying of every single hole they've made it's going to be bad. But this inconsistency means that it's exceedingly difficult to investigate and find these faults and determine how much vibration arises from a problem with the fundamental design of the platform as opposed to the values and building qualities of a certain specification, like a hole or a bolt or a running gear or whatever else it may be. So it's really hard to pin down this kind of thing. And the lack of reliable diagnosis is paralyzing this program because it obscures any information that you need to determine if the issue can actually be resolved and at what cost. If you have a problem with a vehicle and you know what it is, that's a good thing. You know, we have problems with programs. You know, when you design things, things go wrong, you pinpoint it, you fix it. But when it comes to something like a hull, I mean, literally the bodywork of, of the entire platform, that's really, really hard. And is the taxpayer and is the government going to be the ones that are going to pay for, you know, fixing this issue? It's really, really hard to say. I mean, the MOD has spent a huge amount of money on this, huge. And given the prospect of significant yet unquantifiable costs of fixing this vehicle, we have to ask how important is the Ajax of the British Army to spend even more to potentially overhaul whatever issue this is. Now in all honesty, we can't discredit the vehicle for its technical capabilities. In paper and as it performs, it does very well, but the inherent background problems are really just putting a black mark against this program. And you know, the Ajax really is there to fulfill two capability gaps that are extremely important for the British Army. A new reconnaissance vehicle, but also a new carrier for the Army's much vaulted digital backbone platform for infantry and armoured infantry brigades. So they need a more high-tech capability uh, that has, you know, the stabilisation of the turret, etc. for replacement of the Warrior, which I'm very sad about, but we'll talk about the Warrior another day. Um, and although Ajax size, weight and signature make it unlikely as a reconnaissance vehicle, truly though, I mean, it's, it's a beast. I mean, it's almost a Warrior at that point. It did boast a very impressive array of sensors uh, and is quite a viable con component for the uh, fighting systems for reconnaissance units. So, you know, it works. Um, but unfortunately, I think Ajax is going to have a real challenge ahead of us. On top of the upgrades that the British Army is doing with the Challenger 3, they now have to deal with this financial burden. And I'm really, really scared, actually, because I want Ajax to succeed. I want it to be the new vehicle of the future. It deserves it. I think the amount of money that's gone into it, uh, it deserves the ability to serve with the British Army. And from what I'm hearing from a lot of people, uh, they are also on the same page as me, feeling very, very nervous. You know, the Army does face quite a stark decision to make. Do we continue pumping money into this program, potentially fixing these issues that are making our troops potentially sick? Or do we scrap the program completely, go to square one again, maybe bring the Warrior back into the program? I, I'm not too sure. Um, if the Warrior was booted out, you know, from the integ integrated review, uh, it finds itself with another 
difficult challenge. What do we do next? Which vehicle is the one that we're going to keep? So lots of information to digest here. I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm very, very concerned uh, for Ajax and its future. Of course, it really just comes down to the army and general dynamics and the MOD working together to intensively decide how they're going to assess the ratification work to resolve any outstanding issues, whatever they may be. You know, it's no secret, though, that the program was a challenge and had its problems since 2010 to 2014, which is why the MOD has really intensified its scrutiny and working hard to rectify the issues. Uh, another big thing that's come across in the report for this vehicle is that it couldn't reverse over an obstacle more than 20 centimeters high. Apparently that's been changed now and a lot of these problems stem from the additional armor protection that was added to it. Uh, the original hull, which has seen an increase of weight from 19 tons to more than 40 tons. Uh, I can speak safely on the warrior side of things when we went to Afghanistan that the vehicle was upgraded to a higher armor and weight package that it was nowhere near rated to do. Maybe they're hitting the same problems. But I'd love to hear your opinion on this vehicle. Please let me know what you think of it in the comment section below and what you think of this situation. Uh, it's pretty serious stuff. I, I really am hopeful that they can get it fixed up and back into the uh, the fighting you know hands of the troops on the ground in the British Army because they need it. But hey, we will see. Uh, I really do appreciate you all stopping by on today's video. If you did enjoy the video, of course, please leave me a like. It really does help out my channel quite a bit. And uh, if you want to be notified of any upcoming content or you're new to the channel, you can click the subscribe button and the little bell button by it to be notified of any upcoming videos in the future. Also, you can check out the description box below for my social media uh, and my Patreon and PayPal sites. So for those of you who have been supporting financially, I cannot thank you enough for doing so truly from the bottom of my heart. It really does mean a lot to me for you supporting my channel. Thank you so, so much. Um, I hope to see you on the next video, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.